Hello and a very good day to all of you. I hope you're all having a great time at what is yet another absolutely fantastic GTC. And I would like to thank you for choosing to attend this talk. I appreciate your time and interest in the topic, which is an overview of X-Ray Say2, an AI-driven chest X-ray interpretation service delivered via WhatsApp. My name is Prashant, and I am a technopreneur in residence with Art Park, one of the three entities um, involved in the making and delivery of this service. In particular, I have been responsible for some of the software engineering, all of the web architecture and cloud infrastructure for X-Ray Say2. We built the service in response to India's absolutely devastating second wave of COVID-19 earlier this year, uh, hoping to be able to offer something of value to anyone who may have been unfortunately affected due to this terrible outbreak. In the agenda for this session, we have a little more detail about the motivation behind the service, a demonstration of the user experience, a bit of a deep dive into the explainability of the AI, metrics and impact of the model, and the evolutionary direction of the service. While we will not spend much time on the deep technical underpinnings and internals of the AI, I'll nevertheless be happy to take questions on that topic from you via the Q&A chat box as this talk progresses. All right, so let's get into it. Our motivation behind X-ray Say2, and, and this draws upon some of the experience with other medical imaging products that have been co-developed by the three entities, is to be able to extend the benefit of radiology to a larger section of the Indian population. Considering that some of the most accurate COVID diagnoses have relied on medical imaging, HRCT scan reports in particular, we wanted to show that we could leverage some imaging technology that's more widely distributed than the expensive and less available HRCT scan. Another big motivation was the possibility of uh, early detection. COVID, just like many other di diseases, um, if detected early, does afford uh, the patient a much better shot at a positive outcome. And this was especially important as India, like so many other nations in this pandemic, grappled with initial logistical issues around the availability of RT-PCR testing kits, uh, PPE kits, and, and, and medicines. Looking at the data around distribution of imaging technology and radiologists in India, we decided, like, like so many around the world, to do something using uh, chest X-ray images. The, the technology is ubiquitous, even in suburban and rural India. And if X-ray image analysis could be of any value whatsoever, it would, it would be of immense help. Um, the internet and communication uh, platforms like WhatsApp, which is in widespread use all over India, uh, make it easy for X-ray technicians to send scans and images to a central inference service, so long as the service is able to work with uh, the quality loss that, that is suffered due to WhatsApp image compression. Nevertheless, the combination of X-ray imaging, which is ubiquitously available, um, and image input via WhatsApp, which is also equally widespread, um, meant that as long as we had a model with good performance, we could definitely try and help out as many people as possible. Work on the model development um, and, and training had started almost immediately as uh, COVID first hit India, which was in the March-April 2020 timeframe. And by roughly June 2020, um, which was when lockdown restrictions in India had kind of started easing a little bit after the initial restrictions, um, although the first wave was beginning to take shape. So it's around this time, June 2020, was when the trained model was actually ready to serve um, real cases. For over 10 months, until May 2021, the model ran in uh, a closed uh, beta uh, with an organically grown set of doctors um, who had who had all subscribed to this dedicated WhatsApp group, uh, which is where this uh, service was running. As the second wave hit uh, with, with absolutely devastating effect, uh, the model was rolled out to a larger set of doctors on, on scaled up infrastructure with some uh, marketing help, help to distribute the usage of the service to, uh, to more doctors. All throughout, uh, the product remained and continues to remain absolutely free of cost to use uh, for, for doctors and for technicians. So X-ray C2 is actually meant to serve only doctors and X-ray technicians. The, the typical scenario would be a small medical center in a suburban or rural setup with a doctor and either a dedicated or a shared X-ray facility, which may even use an old analog X-ray machine. 
while the model can definitely work with digital X-ray images and DICOM images, but realistically, the overwhelming proportion of uh, images received was always going to be and expected to be uh, low quality mobile phone captures of developed analog X-ray films. The service is also very clearly positioned uh, as a supplement to uh, recognized and established means of diagnosis such as uh, an RT-PCR test or an HRCT scan result and not as a standalone medical diagnosis, uh, diagnosis service. The value clearly is just uh, making the benefits of imaging and radiology uh, more widely available and providing some sort of early interpretation of, um, of an X-ray. Uh, you know, while while uh, RT PCR results were awaited, or or you know HRCT scan uh, results were awaited, the the doctor or X-ray technician would uh, obtain consent from the patient to send a phone camera image of the developed X-ray film. Um, they would generally capture the image in such a way that any patient information printed onto the film by the X-ray printer would be absent. Uh, in the capture sent to the service, and even if by mistake any such information is present, the service ignores it. An image would be taken uh, through to the inference automatically unless initial quality checks in the pipeline result in a manual review flag. The model infers one of several different conditions, a total of 15 labels, um, so think multi-label classification, including in particular COVID, pneumonia, or a combination of the two, and generates a simple uh, three-page report that is sent back to the uh, doctor or technician, again via WhatsApp. This WhatsApp-based distribution with no need to integrate with the existing hospital IT systems was extremely crucial in, in, in fast and uh, you know, widespread adoption of the service. It was also very useful in helping doctors and technicians take uh, informed decisions on managing limited supplies of RT-PCR kits, medicines, etc. And for patients, it was a quick way of risk assessment and a real option to assess whether a further scan was merited you know, in the form of an expensive HRCT or, or maybe even an RT-PCR scan. And uh, now we'll uh, look at uh, a recorded video of uh, an early version of the product right after it was scaled up to meet the demands of the second wave. Um, while the interaction happened using the live service, the, the doctor and the technician here were actually art park staff uh, working with de-identified x-rays from real patients. Uh, these X-ray images were kindly lent to us under uh, patient consent by doctors who had volunteered to test the service out. You can see that the chatbot has a certain level of validation built into it. It rejects random messages with some helpful suggestions. Um, and this particular example also shows the flow involving manual technician review, which we will look at just in a little while. So we see that the um, doctor finally sends a meaningful um, image to the service and uh, the service recognizes that this is actually a chest x-ray image and so um, generates some sort of a reference uh, that the doctor can use to track this case by on the service like i said in this particular uh, uh, demo um, we, we we ensured that the image was sent for manual review and so the technician we have a uh, the service has a roster uh, depending on the time of the day. So the technician gets a notification, they are logged in, they signal their presence to the system they st by starting a simple WhatsApp session. So the system knows they're available, they get a notification. And um, at some point of time, the technician will basically simulate uh, a typical manual review step, which is uh, maybe cropping the image, adjusting the brightness or something. And um, the technician sends it back to the service after the edits uh, to make it uh, slightly more uh, higher quality. And with that, um, inference takes over. And uh, yeah, so the technician sends the image to, and inference takes over. And within just a few seconds, you, you should see the doctor receiving um, a three page PDF report. So that's the report which the doctor receives. So there was a bit of, um, you know, in the, in the recorded demo, there was some bit of unfamiliarity on part of the uh, person playing the technician role, but 
um, in, in, in a real situation with trained technicians, if at all the image goes for a manual review, the turnaround time is actually much faster. Once the chatbot performs its initial validation, this is the ML pipeline that uh, takes over. Um, after trying out multiple models, we, we settled on a combination of SimCLR and AWS's recognition service to identify whether the incoming image contains an X-ray and to establish the uh, bounding boxes um, uh, for, the, for, the, for the identified X-ray in the image. The output is fed to another model which assesses the X-ray, the identified X-ray qualitatively. And X-rays that are clearly bad are labeled as such and sent back to the sender of the image with some generic guidance. In fact, one of the finer points of evolution of the product could be customized recommendations and uh, instead of instead of generic feedback. And this may actually become overarchingly important as the service evolves to other kinds of teleradiology and not just, just X-ray image interpretation. Uh, this is definitely one big area of product evolution that will have to end up relying on some very good AI at scale. X-rays that are reasonably okay, but, but not really good, are sent to manual review by a technician. Most of this category can be resolved by simple cropping, and we're currently working on intelligent uh, image auto-cropping. The bounding box information provided by the earlier step in the, in the processing pipeline cannot be straight away assumed as the extent of the crop. And finally, the absolute core of the engine, which is the, which is the lung condition classifier, gets fed with uh, good quality X-ray images for, for inference. Most of the rest of the stock now will focus on this component. The inference image uh, puts out a three-page report like we saw in the, uh, in the demo video. Um, in this particular slide, we can see all of the three pages from a sample report. The first page summarizes the findings and the second page annotates lung areas with class labels. Um, and the final page shows label-specific heat map annotations of lung areas uh, of the most prevalent uh, conditions. The second and third pages of the report can therefore be considered to be the explainable portion of the, of the AI. In this sample, we see that three labels have been identified. Label seven, seven which corresponds to pneumonia, is uh, uh, detected at the top left and right and bottom right of the image as we see it. 
label 5 which corresponds to mass has been identified um, across both the lungs in the middle of the lung and label 15 corresponding to covid 19 has been identified in the uh, in the right of the image which is essentially the patient's left lung in a largish area corresponding to the lower half of the lung this is the full list of uh, lung conditions that the model currently uh, infers from the input um, while the model specializes on chest x-rays, the, the product is directionally headed towards broader teleradiology and, and may end up using multiple models at the back end, depending on the anatomy that has been imaged, or maybe even the kind of imaging, you know, x-ray versus uh, uh, CT versus something else. The big challenges that we faced in developing this model were quite clearly the low quality of WhatsApp compressed images as well as the lack of uh, existing chest X-ray data, especially the combination of COVID-affected um, uh, chests of Indian origin patients. So we controlled for this using uh, co-learning on, on different internationally sourced data sets, along with some in-house COVID uh, data that was um, generated uh, with patient consent from the early days of uh, uh, usage of the service. A lot of the work was done in the model to train it on low resolution data. In particular, um, image data is augmented if any photo capture error is detected. And what do we mean by photo capture error? So the image could be out of focus, uh, there could be too many objects in the frame, uh, the brightness may uh, not be very uniform, it might not be very bright, the images could be blurred, uh, you know, maybe the uh, frame was not. Uh, aligned properly, you know, the, the projection was a little off. So any of these kinds of um, uh, photo capture errors result in some sort of augmentation, which is uh, relatively easy to do. And um, given the number of class labels, the need for explainable AI and condition localization uh, for the heat maps, it meant that a deep multitask model had to be used. Um, so again, considering all of these cha challenges, uh, a modified retina net was used as the backbone. Um, this this diagram should look familiar to anyone who's familiar with, with retina net. And so I will encourage you all to check that uh, model architecture out if you haven't already. It's among the state of the art for object detection, especially for dense, uh, small scale objects, such as the lung abnormalities that X-ray C2 would have to work with. Um, our model was modified slightly to use ResNext instead of ResNet for improved computational efficiency and, and adds subnetworks specific to a third task in addition to the existing classification and bonding box regression task networks that, that RetinaNet already has. This third task is uh, specialized to COVID-19 and pneumonia, which you can see from the picture above, right? So the uh, items in bold are the, uh, the task additions that we made to the modified RetinaNet. Relying on existing state-of-the-art like uh, like RetinaNet, right, it, it naturally made a huge difference in terms of being able to quickly come up with um, an effective and accurate solution, while allowing us more time to solve for the uh, vagaries that were specific to our, our situation, such as the lack of enough training data or having to solve for low-quality images. Um, some brief stats uh, on, on, the, on the number of images that we uh, uh, used uh, as, as training data to, to train the model. Uh, so that's a total of around 150,000 X-ray images, but if you notice the number of labeled, um, labeled in the sense where we knew the eventual patient outcome via an RT-PCR or HRCT scan. So the number of labeled uh, COVID type chest X-rays was actually very low and probably running to around 1,000 at best. Um, this slide shows a comparison between um, the heat map annotation generated by X-ray C2 and a radiologist's independent assessment of the same image. So the radiologist has not looked at the X-ray C2 output and uh, they have annotated the lung image with their own findings. And you can actually see that, you know, um, there's, there's a lot of correlation between the two uh, markings. Uh, despite all of the challenges with, with model training, we were actually, uh, we, we, we were lucky to have achieved uh, some decent metrics. Uh, more importantly, the, the performance stayed the same even on low resolution WhatsApp compressed images, which, which was an encouraging sign for us. The low specificity wasn't a particularly huge problem uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, chief among them being that typical early treatment for COVID, early intervention is generally just harmless 
vitamin supplements and flu medication and patients should anyway be advised to go in for deeper tests uh, before prescription medication could be uh, administered and uh, you know having said that specificity is still a valuable goal from an overall uh, healthcare financial effectiveness standpoint people needn't spend on um, expensive tests you know they they get uh they don't get diagnosed uh, incorrectly they wouldn't spend on expensive tests and testing kits would therefore be more available to people who really need them so we definitely are continuing to work on improving the specificity of the model while while not uh, regressing on the other metrics and uh, another area of improvement is to uh get better metrics on subcategory labeling and and this is one of the top reasons why we state that the service is only supplementary in nature and it can only uh, aid existing established diagnostic technique techniques such as an rt pcr a scan result or an hrct scan result and uh, it's also the reason why you know we we are very clear that this is a service that should not be directly used by patients in in one of the introductory slides i had i had uh, mentioned the rough timelines of development and rollout of the service and here we can also see the number of patient cases that have been handled by the service uh, totaling to around 10000 as on date um the scale up uh, which was the conversion from the uh, uh, from the from the private beta to the public beta running on cloud that was achieved in exactly 9 days flat in uh, in may 2021 which enabled us to uh, serve a few more patients while the second wave was ongoing and uh, you know it's it's our fervent hope that we don't add to these numbers uh, the the true direction of evolution of the product should be uh, wider tele radiology in general we really hope that there is no third wave uh, where this product needs to be used and in preparation for the same uh, you know being able to uh, cater to a wider variety of tele radiology we are focusing on getting the necessary certifications and compliance uh, to be able to offer the service more widely the despite the exigent demands of covid we have been able to build the service in a way which meets most of these requirements already and and certification should hopefully just follow naturally and we'll be uh, in the process of applying for some of these over the next few months um nvidia's hardware and software were absolutely critical they played played uh, crucial roles in um, helping us build the service uh, it was extremely satisfying to see inference and report generation happen in a 2 to 3 second time frame on a typical g4dn class uh, a100 nvidia gpu uh, this is about 5 times faster than cpu inference on on the same class of machine and more importantly it doesn't degrade in performance even at high concurrency uh, one of the advantages of the tie up with the prestigious uh, indian institute of science iisc bangalore is that it affords us access to some really exalted computing infrastructure such as uh, dgx superpod clusters at at not much cost um so on the infrastructure side one of the next steps would be able to use um, these compute facilities um especially as the service scales up to uh, you know to to meet more uh, tele radiology domains and demand and uh, hopefully we you know we will be able to continue to keep it free or available at a very minimal charge to our users from a software engineering standpoint um exploring multi gpu capabilities confidential ai using enclaves on the gpu and advancements in nlp for the chatbot um for example a you know, multilingual chatbot are interesting evolutionary areas for for the team to pursue and that brings us to the end of this talk i would like to thank you once again for sparing your valuable time today i hope that it has been interesting for you and xrsa2 is keen to collaborate with the community in its endeavor to make tele radiology a reality for the next 6 billion if you would like to support and contribute to such a mission please feel free to reach out to uh, xrsa2 or any of the three entities via their respective websites or social handles um with that once again thank you very much and i wish all of you a fantastic remainder of the gtc